goes at an altitude of about 600 kilometers and with a velocity of 7 kilometers per second. So it also not only goes up, but really goes fast horizontally. As soon as it has reached the right altitude and it goes into orbit, The rocket itself has an upper stage and these have all kind of deposit boxes you could say. The door opens and a spring pushes out the satellite and continues with that 7 km per second uh, velocity. The velocity to make sure that the satellite keeps on falling back to Earth but actually misses the Earth and that's what makes it orbit. It's extremely simple technology I would say but very efficient and that's why they use it on almost every rocket. So what you see right here is our first nano satellite. This is a 6 shoe CubeSat and therefore the dimensions are similar to a shoebox being 10 by 20 by 30 centimeters big. At the front side we have the solar panels. So this is actually what makes sure that we have enough energy to do anything with the satellite. They are deployed right now, but first of all, when they were still in the rocket, they were stowed to the satellite itself. Then if we rotate the satellite a bit, you see more interesting pieces on this side. So at the very top over here, there is the large antenna, and that is actually the antenna that uh, receives the signals from the ground. So we are capable from the communication nodes on the ground to send the data to our satellite. Then within this box, basically the brains of, uh, of the satellite as well, and therefore they extract the messages that have been received. And then eventually all these are being sent back via this bigger antenna as soon as we see our own ground station, ground station at, uh, at our office. One of the bottlenecks to actually get to space is the launching market. And SpaceX is one of those companies that at least allows us to go up in space more often. And they usually say that it is becoming more cheap as well for customers. If we are using a, a rideshare option like SpaceX, we are basically put into the leftover areas of the rocket. And it comes out about 50k per kilogram going up. So this baby here costs about half a million to launch into space. If we would buy the whole rocket ourselves, then we would have to pay 50 to 60 million to actually get it up. But there are a few new companies as well launching rockets into space, which would reduce that to one or two million uh, per launch. As we move forward as a company, we started focusing on three particular markets. The first one is agriculture. The other two are tank and silo monitoring and logistics. So what we can do is we read out sensors that are on the ground in the plantation and then for example give information about the soil moisture, the density uh, of the air, the temperature of the uh, humidity, all these kinds of parameters and then the farmers actually get an update on what to do on the field, on the plantation. So whether that's irrigation or uh, you know taking care of the crops in a, with nutrition, these kinds of information. Therefore they basically get three or four times more yield out of their crops. So step one is the sensor itself actually measuring the data in the field. That data is then stored to our modem. Most of the time the modem that we have produced or manufactured is actually sleeping and that's why our company is called Hibernate because the modem is in hibernation 99% of the time. As soon as the satellite flies over, it transmits the data to the satellite up and then goes back into sleep mode. In the meantime, that satellite sees our ground station it actually transmits all the data back down and then the data is available via data repository uh, for the end customers. Wi-Fi uh, or any other fiber uh, solution, they only cover about 10% of the world and that's why satellites are actually the way to go if you want to expand beyond that 10%. If you look at what Amazon is doing or what Starlink from SpaceX is doing, OneWeb as well, they are providing internet with a real-time two-way communication system, which costs several billion to launch, but only for people that need real-time and broadband internet. However, we are aiming at Internet of Things connectivity, which means a short message once in a while with low power applications, the low cost aspect, because it's only cost a few euros a year to get that daily update, and then with a global standard. Far 
our satellites are designed to have a lifetime for three years from an operational point of view. And then as they move back to Earth, they will be there for another 10 years or so. Eventually they burn up in the atmosphere, so therefore we don't leave any space young behind. We have launched our first two satellites. We are about to open up our commercial service, as right now we are working together with our customers to fine tune the network. And then we are gonna launch more satellites into space to make sure we go from a once per day to once per hour global service.